see in the question a joist cutting a joist is used as a bracket to support a factor load of 200 kilo there is a joist cutting is used as a bracket to support a factor load of 200 kilo okay and it is welded to the column plane so there is a column and it is of i section and to this i section this is the flange and to this flange there is a joist attached to it okay and it is supporting something like 200 kilonewtons okay. and as shown in this figure compute the size of the weld so here the main important thing here is he is asking to find, uh, find out what should be the size of the weld so let me show you what the figure is he has given this figure so see here so this is Indian standard heavy beam section and I mean heavy section uh, 450 this is an I section and as you can see this is the bracket this joist is used as a bracket and it is taking a load of 200 kilo newton and this is transferring this 200 kilo newton to this column okay to this column uh, the load is acting at an eccentricity of 170 mm and as you can see here this is 400 see here the weld and the weld size and location is already given in the figure itself what is that see here this is the weld over here top bottom isn't it right so you can say this as flange weld bottom flange weld and this here in the in the figure can be called as uh, you can call this as top flange weld so why i'm calling this as flange weld as you can see here this weld which is done over here is actually joining the joist flange with the column, right? See at the bottom also, the weld is joining this bottom flange to the column section. So we can call this as top and bottom flange weld and together we can just call it as flange weld, isn't it? And he has given you in the question, the length of the flange weld is 120 mm. 120 mm 120 mm is the length of the weld so if you wanted to see the length of the weld you have to go by 90 degrees right you have to rotate the member by 90 degrees then you can see flange weld here 120 mm in this direction okay so and top and bottom also length of the weld is 120 mm and what is this other weld done here see here this weld okay let me enlarge this for you yes what is this weld so this is the weld that is joining the web with the column flange, isn't it? So can we call this as web weld or weld in the web? Anything that differentiates it from the remaining two. Okay, so what is the depth of the weld? D 320 mm given in this question. See here. 320. Right. So, and the eccentricity is 170, 200. Okay, that's all. So now, the important thing here, you need to find out what is the yes, size of the weld in this question. Okay, what should be the side of the thickness, 
uh, size of the value. And I told you that T is a function of size of the value. Isn't it right? Throat thickness is a function of size of belt. Or you can say that S depends on T or T depends on S. They are both interrelated, right? So now, before finding out what is S, you can just try to try to find out what is T. That, that makes it, that helps us to find out S simply, right? So now, the important thing here is this. Let me erase this. See, there is a weld at the top, which we are calling as flange weld, and bottom also, bottom flange weld. Of course, we together call these two as flange weld, and this is called as web weld. See here, now, because of this 200 kilonewton, the stresses are going to develop on this flange weld and web weld. Okay, so you can say that the 200 k kilonewton of load is being taken by flange weld and also the web weld. Are both in the end? the 200 kilonewton load and come on, exit out the bracket. This load is being shared by the flange weld and also the web weld. So, because of those sharing, we are going to see stresses in this uh, flange weld and also in web weld also. Okay, this is simple, right? But here, the length of the weld is not same, right? See, what is the length of this web weld? 120. And what is the length of this flange weld? Sorry, web weld? 220, uh, 320. Okay, flange weld is 120. Web weld is 320. And moreover, we do not know what is the thickness of the weld, throat thickness of the weld. For example, uh, this has T2 and this has T1. Web weld has T1 and web uh, weld uh, flange weld has T2 as the throat thickness. And just assume that it is two times of T1. Okay, nothing happens. So the throat thickness of the weld, web weld is T1, I think. Flange weld your thickness same thing, two times of that T1. Okay. Why not? We can use different throat thicknesses, different size to the welds, okay, to the flange and web. There is no con constraint to that. So I have taken two different throat thickness. So what happens is flange or S2, and here you get S1, where S1 is not equal to S2 and T1 is not equal to T2. Isn't it right? So thickness where I want to throw thickness flange weld the web weld the size of the weld could amount and it comes different because T is K times of yes. It is dependent on yes, right? So now we have to go through the same process which we have done in the previous problem itself. Let me go into the solution a bit. So he has not given what is the grade of steel. Okay, what is the grade of electrodes that he is using? So let me assume that the grade of steel, I mean column and bracket joist, the two of them are FE410 grade steel. Therefore, the ultimate strength would be how much? 410 Newton per mm square. Now E41 electrode is used to weld. And of course, you know what is E41? E41 is the electrode whose ultimate strength is 410 Newton per mm square. Here, the grade, I mean, you can say that the ultimate strength of the uh, metal and the parent metal and the electrode is assumed to be same. Okay. So both have the ultimate strength, 410. And of course, take this as shop weld. He did not give me the question, so I assumed. And from the IS 800, you can take MW is equals to 1.25 for shop weld. And therefore, so as I told you, there is weld on two locations as from the image. What is that? Both the welds can have same size and throat thickness are different. As I told you, you can take the flange weld and the web weld of 
same throat thickness or you can say different. If the throat thickness changes, size of the weld also changes. Okay, it's your wish. So to make this a little complicated, I try to take different throat thickness. See, throat effective throat thickness of the web weld web weld that is T. Okay, T1. Okay, let's take T1. And the throat thickness of the flinch is taken at two times of that web throat thickness, 2 T1. So as the throat thickness is taken or assumed different, what happens now? The size of the weld in the web weld and also flinch are going to be different. So now the question that he asked is to find this size of the weld S1 and S2, isn't it right? Flinch and web. So let us find out that. So now let me make you understand that similar to we what we have started in the ta ta type 2 there are two stresses that are going to generate in the belt in the belt both in the belt uh, flange and web okay so you are going to see direct or vertical shear stress which is represented with the fa that is the usual expression uh, which is given by force by effect to area of the belt of course we will go to that and second one is shear stress due to burning which is called as fb I told you that. And we get Fe, which is equals to root over Fa square plus Fb square. We have solved this kind of problem in the previous class. Okay. So now let us find out the first one. Direct shear stress Fa in both the wells, in both the wells. Okay. Not individually, both. So since the weld in a web and a flinch are of different throat thickness and size, the load shared by those welds are also going to be different. So we are saying that flange weld and throat thickness and length is different. And web weld and web throat thickness is different. Size is going to be different. So they are going to take different proportion of the load. What is the total load? 200 kilo Newton. But out of that, only portion of it is taken by the flange weld. And remaining portion is going to be taken by web weld. So let us find out what is the total area actually. So total area of the weld is area of the weld on flange, yes, and on web. You can find out, right? So what is the flange? Flange, this, this is 2T1, and this is something like 120mm, right? And we have a other one also, 120mm length, and two times of T1. So, can you find out what is the area of this length of the weld into throat thickness is the area of the weld. So we have one and two. So what we are going to do is multiply with two. So 120 into two T1 will give you the area of single flange weld into two just the pina kinda on the total area question. And now what is the area of the weld in the flange? So this is how it is going to look. Remember, this is a vertical there. Weld. Uh, in my previous problem, look at derivation. Look at this. right? Throat thickness is T1 and T1, and the depth is 320 mm. So what would be the area? T1 into 320 plus T1 into 320. You can simply write 2 into T1 into 320, right? So that is what I wrote here, 2 into 320 into T1. Okay, this is the total length. So now, so now the load shared by the weld is proportional to area of the fa uh, uh, weld, area of the failure plane and number. Okay, so let us see how much of the load is being taken by the flange weld and how much is the area of the weld i mean uh, load being shared by the area of web weld okay let me just again remind you what is web weld this vertical weld which i am showing you here uh, let me just clear this out for right so this is web weld and this top and bottom is 
is flange belt. Okay, this is 120 and this is 320. So now let's go into that. So now let us see what is the area of the flange belt, just flange belt. See in the question here, we have already found out, we have already written here, right? Right. This one. What is that? 2 into 120 into 2 T1. And it is taking some load of X. Right. We do not. Know. But we know that the total area of the belt is 1120 T1. And the load it is taking is 200. Total area of this is 200 kilonewton. Right. Yes. Just cross multiply this. What would you get? X is equals to. 2 into 120 into 2 T1 divided by 11 20 T1 into 200 kilonewton. So that is what I wrote here, 200, 85.71 kilonewton. So therefore, out of 200 kilonewton, the flange belt is actually sharing 85.71 kilonewton of the load. So what happens to the remaining portion? Yes, it is taken by the web belt. You can just Calculate it if you want. Simple thing. What uh, you can write. So, what is the area of the web? 2 into 320. So, 2 into 320 into T1. It is taking a load of Y. So, total area is taking a load of 200. So, just cross multiply this. You get Y is equals to 2 into 320 into T1 divided by 1120 T1 into 200. So that is what I got. So 114.2. So if you add these two, you will get 200. 200 kilometer. So now what happens to the stresses in the belt? Okay, so we are trying to find out the first kind of stress. What is that? Direct shear stress. Force by effective area. So as the load being taken by them is different, the stresses are also going to be different. So the direct stress in the flange weld will be equals to the load that it is taking, that is 85.71 into 10 to the power of 3 Newton, divided by area of the web belt, web, sorry, flange belt. So you get this. Of course, you don't know what is the T1 value, so it has to remain that way. And now direct shear stress in web belt. Yes, the load taken by that belt, divided by area of the web belt. It remains in the same way, T1. So now you, you can say that what is the total load? Just, just simply direct shear stress, total direct shear stress. You can just add. So now second kind, horizontal shear stress in the flange belt. Okay. So you know this is due to, due to movement. M is equals to P into E, which is given by FB is equals to P into E by I into Y. Here, I is movement of inertia, guys. Not polar movement of inertia, guys. This is just the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. So now, how can you calculate the value of I? That's the important thing. See, the weld is of this way. Let me take paint. Uh, let me take paint and let me try to explain this. Okay, so see here, this is the top weld. Let me fill this, let me just draw this. So this is how the weld is, guys.
Okay, just let me write this. So the throat thickness is two times of T1. So this and this and this is what we call as flange weld of 120 mm and this is web weld of 320 mm okay so where do you think the xx is going to be somewhere here right at the center exactly this is a symmetrical section so this is x and this is x uh, what do you think the distance between this and this would be this is So what is the area of this? 120 into 2 T1. And the area of this is 120 into 2 T1. And what is the area of the web? This is 320 into T1. And this one also same, 320 into T1 is the area of web weld, right? So now, what? How do you find the moment of inertia? I of web. What do you think it would be? Okay, so combine it. Then it combine just the what would be the thickness and like with Okdani can find out change. Let's we can go that. What is B D cube, right? What is the B value T1 into D cube? 320 cube by 12. We have two, this one and this as two. So multiply with two. So what do you get? Now I web is equals to this value. So now go for I flinch. So what do you get? I flinch. Just calculate it from this and you are going to get Uh, what would be the value is uh, right here v d cube first one is v two times of t1 u v d cube by 12 plus p into d is the area into h bar square isn't it right how much it would be it is 400 ishb 400 therefore it is going to be 200 in the context see since bracket is ishb 400 depth total depth of bracket is going to be 400. So what would be the center uh, distance between from the midpoint to top 200, 400 by two, right? The important thing here is this value over here is being neglected. Okay, since it is going to be very much small because T1 and is smaller than cube chest and it is going to be very small. So we are going to neglect that. Therefore, what would be the value of I is equals to T1 into 320 cube by 12 into 2 plus remaining portion. What is that? 2 T1 into 120, right? Into 200 square. And remember, there are two flanges, right? So you need to multiply with the two. So this is the moment of inertia of this weld group. Okay, so that is what I wrote in this equation also. Let me show you. So this is what I wrote here. Okay, so by calculating it, 
you will get i value also in terms of t1 so simply substitute in the above calculation moment of inertia of the flange weld about neutral axis is neglected as it is very small and insignificant okay as it told so now find out what is the horizontal shear stress fp so what is this p into e and this is totally i and this is y which is equals to total b by 2 and to 400 by 2 on substitution you get this and now you know that this e maximum shear stress in this uh, shear stress is this is f a and this is f b and remember that we have two stresses f a rendo chain of the flange weld well only and uh, ingotemo weld well only okay that is the stress that is the force per unit area right you, you cannot just simply add them okay there is may, no meaning in adding those two things okay so for example see that that is not a load okay that is not a load so you cannot just simply add those stresses too okay web method 178.57 divided by t1 newton per mm square on the stress flange method kuda ante so total stress entha ante you cannot just simply add it okay so stress and tension and force per unit area web method ante unde flange weld method kuda ante unde so ee teeskunanu konni saarlu web method vere ga vachi flange method vere ga value osthe edaithe ekku vachindo danni manam ikkada teeskovali okay itland cases lo so some people might add and form this fpa okay don't get confused here guys so now we know that effective shear stress is this equation root over fpa square plus fb square and you know that that should be less than t fwd which is equals to design strength of weld so check it so you could again listen that man t1 find out cheyadan kada equation rasam kabatti em chestam ante we equate these two equations okay equivalent shear stress can be equal or less than that so take uh, the condition of equality and you will get t1 is equals to 1.734 mm okay so you got what is the throat thickness what is this this is the throat thickness of web weld web weld na kadanni t1 anukunnam so idi so what you know that t1 is equals to 0.7 of s1 you can say s1 s1 or s web ankochu sw ani about the confusion so now what would be the sw t1 by 0.7 so what is the weld 2.5 but remember the minimum size of the weld is 3 in any case right so make it 3 this is the minimum size of the weld you can use any much uh, you can increase more than uh, you can use more than 2.5 okay so make it 3 of course you can use 4 or 4.5 also and next uh, what is the throat weld two times of t1 this is times two times of t1 so this is this throat thickness and divided by 0.7 will give you this so 5 mm size of the weld in flange so i hope this is the end of the problem so i hope you people have understood uh, the problem here okay so you you practice this problem uh, on your own once again on paper okay this this problem seems to be easier understandable but you have to practice problems on the paper okay so but we have a condition that maximum limit of weld size is what thickness of the least thickness of the flange minus 1.5 what is the thickness of the flange 12.7 minus 1.5 11.2 you provided 5 mm kabatti maximum kanta takkuve meer provide chesar kabatti it is same so how did i get this 12.7 yes you can just check it out this book is 808 seals uh, sections gurinchu untundi okay go through that and manake entante is h should be 400 so check for this i section what is the flange thickness 12.7 endu flange thickness iskovali endu iskovali ante rendedi din rendedi compare cheyali rendu i sections hai meek chuste joist bracket kinda vaadamo dandi is hb 400 atlane column kuda is 400 so ఈ రెండు ఫోర్ హండ్రెడ్ కాబట్టి 
you are going to check just the you will get pulp point 7 is the flange thickness okay you must get used to this code book okay 